Sure. Um, so hi, I'm Jesse from the Open NMS Group. I'm the uh, CTO there, and uh, I'm at Scylla Summit this week, um, presenting uh, about our time series database solution called Newts um, that leverages uh, ScyllaDB as a storage engine. Um, so as Michael mentioned, we're today we're going to talk about scaling your time series data with Newts. Um, so first, a bit about me. Um, I've been involved with OpenNMS since uh, 2012. Started off as a, uh, a user, eventually became a, a contributor, and then joined the, uh, the company that maintains OpenNMS, the OpenNMS Group, in uh, 2014. Um, so that's when I was first exposed to uh, Cassandra um, back then, when we started actually working on Newt. Um, been using it since then, and then ScyllaDB since, uh, since 2017. Um, so before we talk about Newt's, kind of give you a little background about OpenNMS and uh, how we do time series data in OpenNMS. Um, so OpenNMS is the world's first enterprise grade network management application platform developed on the, the open source model. So that's our uh, CEO's elevator pitch. Um, so I'll break that down a little here. Uh, world's first, so the project was actually started in 1999 and has been actively developed ever since. Um, enterprise grade, so it was developed to scale from day one. Um, it's a network management application platform, so it's meant to solve network monitoring problems in the enterprise. Um, we call it a platform because there's a, quite a lot of different uh, bells and whistles and tools you can use, and it typically needs to be customized to the particular deployment. Um, uh, the solution's written in Java, and it's published under um, the AGPL v2 license. All right, so uh, some of the kind of features that OpenNMS has, um, we support uh, receiving events from various sources, uh, for example, syslog messages, uh, parsing those, turning into faults if they match certain criteria, generating notifications based on those. Uh, we also support um, reporting for SLA violations, things like that. Um, gathering a number of uh, metrics from different sources, so we support actually both um, uh, poll-based approaches, right, where we periodically go and pull for metrics, for example, via JMX, JDBC, SNMP, or we also support streaming telemetry, where devices will actually push uh, the metrics to the platform. Um, so as you see, a lot of different things there, um, but today we'll, we'll focus particularly on the, uh, the graphing aspect and the, the time series data. Um, so here's a graph of data in OpenNMS. Uh, what we're looking at here are uh, the bits in and out on a particular network interface over um, a 12-hour period. Right? Um, so this is functionality that's actually been in OpenNMS uh, ever since, I think, 2001 or so, uh, when it was originally added. Um, so before you know, kind of using uh, Newt's and uh, having a scalable solution, we used to use uh, RRD tool. So for those who aren't familiar, um, our DTool is a set of utilities for time series storage and graphing um, that stores uh, the time series metrics in, flat fi or in binary files on disk and that are of a fixed size. So uh, all of the size is allocated whenever you create the RD file. So if we look at the first command at the top there, that's kind of a quick example. Um, you define the file name, how many different data sources, uh, how data is aggregated, how frequently you expect to push data to it, and so on. After that, you can push metrics, add them to it, um, and then retrieve the data. There are also utilities out there for, for graphing. So that's kind of how it, uh, it started out. Um, so originally, we started using our RD tool, interfacing it uh, with our RD tool through JNI, uh, native library. Uh, that was back in 2002. In 2004, we actually started using a uh, pure Java-based implementation of our RD tool called JRobin uh, to kind of make distribution a little easier, not having to uh, depend on any uh, system libraries, things like that. And then we see a big gap there between 2004 and 2015. So uh, that was actually the, the only time series strategy for a very, very long time. Um, in 2015, we developed JRD2, which is basically a multi-threaded version of the RD tool interface, take advantage of um, developments there. And that same year, we also added support for newts, right, that, that we'll talk about a bit more today. Um, and another th point I wanted to mention, we also added support for uh, Kafka. So um, that was just this year. We can actually uh, push metrics out to a Kafka topic, and then users can uh, do whatever they want with them, whether publish it to their own time series database or integrate it with their own tooling, uh, pull it into Spark, et cetera. Um, one thing that led us to develop 
newts and the solution that we had is that we realized that we're writing actually a lot more data than we read. So um, for time series metrics and network monitoring, people tend to like to collect everything, right? In case there's a problem, then you can actually go ahead and, and look at it afterwards, right? So we tend to collect a lot more data than people actually look at. So we needed a solution that was um, optimized for writes. Um, that led us to develop newts. Um, so newts is a time series storage strategy based on, originally based on Apache Cassandra. Um, it was actually developed um, by our old CTO, uh, Matt Brzezowski, in conjunction with uh, Eric Evans, one of the actual uh, committers and um, creators of uh, the CQL language in Cassandra. So they, they helped actually create uh, newts. So from the beginning, it was designed for high throughput. So by leveraging uh, Cassandra or Scylla, we're able to get a linear scale and a right optimized database. Um, we also designed it for grouped access. So if you remember the um, time series graph that we looked at originally, uh, bytes in and bytes out, it's actually very common to look at related metrics uh, at the same time, right? So we designed the database to be able to store those together to make it efficient to uh, retrieve them together. Um, also, one thing we looked at doing is adding late aggregation. So uh, rather than aggregating the data uh, and storing it that way, we aggregate the data whenever it's retrieved out of the database. So for example, if you're looking uh, at a graph for uh, the last month or so, what we'll do is we'll pull out all the data points from the last month, um, pull them out, perform some computations, and then return the, uh, the actual time series from there. Um, so a bit about kind of how Newt's works under the hood. A um, few different concepts, right? Uh, top level, there are resources, which is basically a group of related metrics. So going back to the first example, that would be the interface. Um, we have the metrics, which would be the, um, the different um, metrics which we want to collect values for. So in that case, if in octets, if out octets, those would be two different metrics. And finally, the actual values, uh, we call those the samples. Um, so here's you know, a concrete example of uh, uh, what the resource and metrics would look like. Uh, in this case, we're looking at um, data that's been collected from JMX that actually uh, is looking at a histogram of the insert latency uh, for data in newts. So um, if you see those big spikes there, I'll let you guess which uh, database we're using on the back end when we ever took that graph. Um, so let's look at the kind of the well. Let's look at the schema that we're um, using for newts. So this is the uh, the samples table. So these are where all the raw values are stored. Um, important part is the key, right? We have in there. We have um, the initial part. We have the context, the partition, and the resource. So uh, context is a string that allows for multi-tenancy in the same key space. Um, partition is the partition key that's derived from the timestamp. Um, so that'll allow us to group uh, metrics in by time period. So that defaults to blocks of uh, seven days. And finally, the resource, right? Um, so using those, we're able to retrieve blocks of samples for a given resource um, keyed by partition. Okay, so now we kind of understand how the data is modeled, um, how it's stored. Uh, so let's go back and look at how late aggregation works. Um, so whenever data, points are retrieved uh, from newts, what we do is uh, we'll actually pull out, for, pull out all the data points for the given time range, um, and then we'll compute weighted averages of those to help create the primary data points, and then run a consolidation function against that to get out of the averages, min, max, et cetera. So um, the way that kind of works is uh, we take all the points that we've retrieved, plot them out, and then we run uh, a line going back from each point back to the previous point. If, um, that, if the length of that line exceeds what we call the, the heartbeat, then we don't count that, that, uh, that point at all. Um, so this is a similar model that our D tool use in their archives. Um, it seems to be pretty effective for representing um, data from a lot of points, so uh, we, we carry that over to newts as well. And those computations are run whenever the, uh, uh, the time series are actually rendered uh, for visualization. Okay, so now we're able to retrieve the data, we're able to um, aggregate it and visualize it, but how do we find it, right? So given that we're stored by um, uh, resource, how do we locate which 
uh, resources are available. So to do that, we index them using what we call the, the terms table. Um, so that allows us basically to tag resources with uh, key value pairs, right? So then we can do search and locate the, uh, uh, the resources. Um, so our search queries uh, support a subset of the uh, Lucene query language. Um, so it allows you to write kind of queries like this. Uh, this would then return uh, all of the resources uh, that have metrics right, for that, that match the, that criteria. Um, so now, how is that integrated in OpenMS, right? So that's uh, kind of why we developed Newts. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, OpenMS supports a number of different ways of collecting data, right? We have um, right, either poll-based methods where we'll schedule collections every so often or streaming-based methods that will get metrics pushed to us. Um, so internally, what we call those groups of metrics are collection sets. Right. Um, so what we do is we derive a series of newts samples from the collection sets. Uh, we push that to a ring buffer in memory. Uh, we break that out into small batches and then insert those into um, SciloDB. Right. Um, so we actually uh, have a small caching layer there on the right uh, in front of the terms table because to help prevent uh, indexing the same resources many times, right? If a resource has already been indexed, we don't need to index it again. Um, so if there's a cache hit, we simply ignore that. Um, so that's actually caused some, some problems whenever um, the system starts up in a cold boot, the cache is empty, so it causes an influx of writes to the terms table. Uh, to help work around that, what we've done is actually help warm the cache whenever the system starts up, so we halt the writes until we read some values um, to help prevent that big influx of writes to the terms table. Um, so our ID tool actually comes with a uh, graphing library and language built in. Um, so if you look at the graph on the right, that's what would be, could be generated natively using our ID tool. Um, they also have a graph definition language. Uh, so in OpenNMS, a number of our graphs were already written in that. We have you know, hundreds or thousands of these graphs uh, for different cases. So what we're looking at doing is developing a, a system that would be able to read those but render data from, from newts. Uh, so we developed a solution called Backshift, so it's able to take those same RD graph definitions and um, generate similar graphs that are a little bit more interactive than the, the flat PNGs that uh, uh, our ID tool would generate. And as you see, the graphs look uh, pretty similar. So let's talk performance now, right? So how, does, how well does this thing work? Um, so here's a case where I you know, set up a deployment on, uh, on AWS with a write heavy workload. Uh, we're just trying to insert as many samples as we can here, right? So uh, we set up Cassandra um, on five i3s with the Forex large, uh, and then we are we had uh, several systems that were generating load and inserting the samples, right? So with that system, we're able to get just over a million samples per second inserted. So how does that compare to Scylla? Um, so similar environment, running Scylla 2.3.1, uh, we're able to get you know, almost double, 1.8 times the, uh, uh, the results with you know, almost no changes at all, right? So just out of the box, swapping uh, Cassandra for Scylla, we're able to get almost two X throughput. I suspect that if we were to spend more time optimizing this, we can get even more, um, but just to show you without, you know, doing much, the, the performance gains are there. Um, so that said, we've actually been using um, Newts for uh, a while now, uh, again, since uh, 2015, since it's been formally integrated in our product. Um, we've noticed a number of issues in uh, deploying newts, or not issues, but uh, operational things. Um, particularly one thing is uh, estimating disk space usage, right? So in the RD world, it was very easy uh, to estimate disk space usage because the, uh, the files are allocated up front of a fixed size, it would never grow. You know you have these many resources, here's how much storage you need. Um, and a system like Scylla, it's a little bit more, more difficult, a lot of different factors in play, um, so it's harder to, uh, to provision that up front. That said, uh, the systems can scale, so you don't have to provision all up front. You could just add as, um, as you need to, but people kind of migrating over, um, they have kind of trouble with that. Um, another thing is cluster management, right? So going from storing um, metrics in flat files, uh, a little easier to 
to deal with than having to manage a, a, a whole cluster. So um, it's been a bit of a, been a learning curve for the operators. And um, finally, we have uh, data mangling, right? So cases where you want to delete a point or rename a series or things like that, we now have to provide tooling to help implement that. Previous, you were able to just either delete the RD file or you know, rename it, put it in another folder. Uh, a lot easier to do that kind of things. Now we have to provide uh, tooling over top of that. So that's kind of a, a brief overview of uh, Newt. Um, so the Newt project itself is uh, hosted on GitHub. It's published under the uh, Apache 2 license. Um, yeah, we use it in OpenNMS as an alternative to RD tool for people who have requirements that want to scale out their, um, their time series data um, beyond a single host. Right? Um, the project is, uh, <clears throat> there isn't much activity or new features being added from day to day since it is uh, relatively stable and complete as far as we need it uh, in, in OpenNMS, but it does make for uh, for a strong engine that can be used to um, retrieve and write time series data from your applications. Um, so that's, that's it. Uh, I realize I'm a bit short on time here, but uh, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, and if, if not here, then you can uh, reach out to me and I'll be happy to see if Newt's is the right time series solution for your use case. <laughs>